a single whisper can turn into a roar. In boardrooms from Silicon Valley to Frankfurt, supply chain managers are now listening for China's next move. Because that whisper arrived on Thursday. In an abrupt and sweeping announcement, the Chinese government declared dramatic new controls over rare earth elements and the technologies surrounding them. The impact could echo across the world, from high-tech factories to defense systems, from electric cars to consumer electronics, no industry is untouched. China's Ministry of Commerce unveiled the new rules, which stipulate that foreign companies must seek special government approval before exporting any items containing even trace amounts of rare earth elements that originate from China, regardless of where the final product is manufactured. In addition, China will now require licensing for technologies associated with rare earth mining, smelting, recycling and magnet production. Most strikingly, any export request tied to military use will be categorically denied. The new regulations under announcement number. 61 of 2025 are being called the strictest rare earth and permanent magnet export controls Beijing has ever issued. These rules come at a politically charged moment. A summit between US President Donald Trump and Chinese President Xi Jinping is expected in a few weeks making it hard to see this as anything but a calculated geopolitical move. The message is unmistakable. China is flexing its grip over one of the world's most critical supply chains and reminding the global community just how perilous dependence can be. Rare earth elements comprise 17 chemical elements, including the 15 lanthanides plus yttrium and scandium. Though they are not truly rare in absolute abundance, Economically viable concentrations are uncommon, and processing them is costly and complex. These metals are vital in everything from permanent magnets to catalysts, electronics, lasers and military systems. China's importance in this supply chain is staggering. In 2024, the world's rare earth production totaled about 390,000 metric tons. Of that, China's share was approximately 270,000 tons, or nearly 70% of global output. Beyond mining, China controls an estimated approximately 90% of global rare earth processing, refining, separation and magnet manufacture. China holds around 44 million metric tons of rare earth reserves, the largest in the world. Because of this dominance, materials mined in other countries often still require Chinese processing. In effect, China has positioned itself not just as a miner, but as the indispensable middleman for the entire value chain. This week's announcement builds upon earlier measures introduced in April 2025, when China imposed export controls on seven rare earth elements and magnet products. Under that regime, foreign firms were required to apply for export licenses, even for embedded components, and were subjected to stricter scrutiny. The effects were immediate. Exports of rare earth magnets reportedly fell by more than 70% year on year in May, as factories in Europe and Asia confronted supply chain delays. German auto manufacturers warned that critical sensors, motors and braking systems could be disrupted. Some automakers sought special export permissions, but the process was slow and approvals scarce. That prior move was widely interpreted as signaling that Beijing is prepared to treat rare earths as a strategic tool in trade and national security. Today's new rules mark an escalation of that approach. The ripple effects are already being felt across multiple sectors. Prices have surged. Key materials like neodymium and dysprosium, critical for electric motor magnets, have seen price jumps of 30 to 50% in early response to Titan supply. Advanced radar, avionics, missile guidance and satellite systems all depend on high-performance rare earth magnets. 
with military-related exports off-limits. Countries that rely heavily on Chinese components may find their chains strained. Companies that manufacture components in multiple countries but rely on Chinese rare earth inputs are scrambling to reroute parts or secure permission licenses. Some have warned of production slowdowns in Europe and Asia. Shares in rare earth mining firms spiked following the announcement. For example, Ramaco and MP Materials saw gains and ETFS tied to strategic metals climbed. Countries that depend on Chinese rare earth exports are pressing Beijing for exemptions or special quotas. Some are accelerating plans to build alternative supply chains or champion neighbor nation production. If supply constraints are real, certain nations and companies could benefit. Already engaged in efforts to revive domestic rare earth mining, the US stands to gain if it can scale refining and magnet manufacture. The Mountain Pass mine in California, run by MP Materials, is one example. Though US refining capacity remains limited, though its 2024 output was just approximately 13,000 tons, Australia's stable political climate, existing mining infrastructure, and significant reserves make it a primed contender. Canada, Brazil, Pakistan, India, Vietnam, and African nations are being looked at more closely. However, most lack the downstream processing capabilities to challenge China immediately. Projects like the Pensana Salt End facility in the UK aim to produce approximately 5% of global neodymium and praseodymium oxide demand when fully operational, offering a foothold for Europe in the refined rare earth supply chain. China is reportedly asking countries like India to certify that rare earth magnets they receive will not be re-exported to the US, a clear attempt to restrict downstream flows. But these potential winners face big hurdles. Building new refining plants is capital intensive, time intensive and energy intensive. Many jurisdictions have strict environmental or regulatory constraints. And until those bottlenecks are overcome, reliance on China remains a risky fallback. This is not the first time China has used rare earth export controls as a geopolitical lever. In 2010, amid a maritime dispute with Japan, China briefly suspended rare earth exports, sending global markets into shock. That move led to widespread stockpiling and aggressive efforts in the West to diversify supply. In 2012, the US, EU and Japan filed a complaint with the World Trade Organization arguing that China's quotas violated trade obligations. By 2014 to 2015, China formally removed many of its export quotas, but preserved licensing requirements and oversight mechanisms. Even during those years, China's foothold in refining remained unchallenged, ensuring that other nations were still dependent on Chinese factories for separation, purification and magnet production. Today's escalation is thus the latest chapter in a decades-long strategic game. Experts caution that supply chain diversification will be slow. The International Energy Agency notes that from 2020 to 2024, for key energy minerals, including rare earths, about 90% of new supply growth came from a single dominant country, China in the case of rare earths. The concentration of refining is even more entrenched. Time will tell whether these efforts are sufficient. In the interim, China's new restrictions are a sharp reminder. In the high-stakes world of tech and defense, raw materials are not just inputs, they are instruments of power.